Hey guys, I want to do a video today on the Harbor Freight and Maddox cooling system and test refill kit. Um, it's about 60 70 bucks at Harbor Freight, and honestly, this thing is worth every penny, especially if you're doing uh, you know, these newer one newer cooling systems with like NRS coolers, EGR coolers, things like that, where it's really critical you get a good fill on them. So when you open it up, you have your actual cooling system filler, which works on using shop air to create a Venturi effect and puts vacuum into the cooling system. It has different adapters for different size cooling necks. And then kind of a universal one here for, you know, the really small stuff like some of your imports. It comes with a standard one. This works on most uh, GM vehicles that I've found. Uh, don't work on a lot of other things other than GM, but um, it works pretty good and I'm gonna show you guys how it works. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do, like I said, it comes with the one on there and this works for most GM vehicles that I found, like your 3800s, your W bodies, things like that. Obviously looking at this, it's not gonna work on this old G-Van. So you pick the adapter that works. This is the 40 millimeter plunker down in there and you just slide that in on top and then you twist the knob and what that's doing is that it's, is it sucking that it's pulling this up expanding this to make a good tight seal in there now it doesn't always work the way you want it to and sometimes you got to hold it in place until you get some vacuum on it this crank that guy tight there. Okay. Yep. Then take a shop air, connect it. You can see it's got a little gauge on there, and it goes from zero to thirty. General rule is you want to get twenty-five inches of vacuum to get a good fill. So. So I was an idiot and I didn't have my fill suction hose closed. That's why I wasn't pulling vacuum. Now that's the other way, that's how this tests it. So, see I only pulled about 13 inches right now on there. But you can see that it's holding nice and steady, it's not moving. Now, if you just, like in this case, I put a coolant hose on or say you did put a thermostat in or a water pump or something like that and you nick the sealer didn't get the gas equating right when you're doing this you will not hold vacuum it might suck it up but then it'll just slowly bleed off so that's how this tests it now obviously pressure which is what the cooling system runs on is different than vacuum so you know if you already have a leak it won't exactly tell you where that is but after reassembly this is a great way to tell if you have a leak so we're just gonna run it up we're gonna pull our vacuum So we got our 25 inches of vacuum. We've been hold we've had the air off for a little bit now. It's been holding 25 so we know we don't have a leak, we don't have a cut seal, anything like that. So the next step is to fill it. And that's where your suction tube comes in, which I like to put it just right in the bottom of a ca the catch pan that I use to catch coolant. And then all you do is you flip the knob and it just sucks it in. Too easy. Now the great way to do it, great thing about this is, by the time you're, you run out of vacuum, you get down to you know a couple inches of vacuum yet, 
the cooling system is basically full. And if you run out of coolant in your pan, well, you probably lost some of your low anyways. So that just if you have something extra, just dump it in the pan, let it catch up. And that or you know when you're done top it off so yeah that's how it works and uh, like I said you know sometimes bleeding these things could be a real bear and uh, this thing makes it absolutely worth it so give one get one get one give it a try and see what you think thanks guys